Hello everybody and welcome to an exercise in using true metallic metals, gold, but with oils. And we're talking about some homemade oils. Now here's the figure. These are some figures that I painted on stream, kind of your Rivendell elves. And what I did was I took some of this green stuff world, pure metal pigments powder, mixed it with linseed oil. Now well, we turn it into an oil paint. We've used this a whole bunch of times. And it's been incredibly successful. I have to say it's pretty darn impressive. You say, so what's the deal with mixing your own? Why don't you just buy some oil paints? Well, there's some complications there. First of all, if you do find an, a traditional artist oil paint that's a decent metal, as in it doesn't look like some kind of, oh gosh, what is it, sequins or something like that? I mean, just gigantic flakes of metal. Well, you're gonna, it's gonna be hard to find and it's not gonna be cheap because this right here is an expensive color. Right? It's pretty much the same price as a cadmium color, not cheap. Also, these things tend to have algids in them. I don't care about that. Some people get fussy. But the other thing is contents under pressure. Every time I open this thing, this stuff comes just shooting out of there. I don't know if that's the algids or not. To me, actually, I think a better option would be things like the oil brushers because these are consistent. You can look at that you got silver like silver paint you don't have you don't see any flakes in there i have had some oil paints let me see if i can find one of these things here i mean it is just incredible yeah Whew. this right here and now it's not as expensive as the other one was but brutal just you could count the flakes in this thing it was not very fun whatsoever so what we started to do was use other things like this iridescent pearl white and then even we moved on to some of these interference paints which were spectacular however these aren't cheap either and folks overseas outside of the u.s had a real difficult time trying to get their hands on these that's when we started to use well things like powdered pigments and here's another exercise here so this is interference gold i just showed you that interference paint well, this is taking the interference powders and making gold. We did it with blue. We did it with this iridescent pearl white. Think of this as almost your metal highlight color right here. Nice thing about these is that they can be mixed with regular oil paints. And we're going to get into that real soon on the palette over here. So let's let's discuss. Let's discuss. We got our usual white over here. You got brilliant yellow pale there. Sitting over there in the corner is Terra Rosa. These are the usuals that you see right here of indigo, black, spinel, van dyke, brown. Little perline black over here, just reasons. Indian yellow, pay close attention to that because we're going to be tinting our other golds and also even to this iridescent pearl white with that Indian yellow. Do I have the interference blue out here already and then some Prussian blue. That's more for the cloaks now. One of the guys that we're painting here has the typical elven shield, so we're going to paint it like this. These also were done not only for Twitch, but I also did a special one of these for my Patreon page, and there'll be links to that in the description. So here, let's just put these guys real quick out on the palette here. And wow, that is just such a fine flake right there. I mean, you can't see anything. Spectacular. I think there's five or six of these. There's a copper, there's a bronze. I think there's a ancient gold or antique gold, something like that. I don't really worry about all those different ones because we can really change them around. Oh, asphaltum is another color that's also gonna be out on the palette right over there. And we're just gonna see if we can't find that and stick it on here. There we go, asphaltum from Gamble. That really is a nice color mixing with the gold and also in the pre-glaze, which is something that we're going to do next. We got these two guys here. Uh, I always like to have multiple figures because, well, one, I'm working on one, the paint is kind of setting on the other one. We might try to do a quick little freehand thing here that maybe will mimic that pattern that's on the base. Now, that's something a little bit different. That is the green stuff world texture roller. And that is something that I've covered in other videos. I don't want to get into the basing right now because this is all about true metallic metals. But what we're going to try and do is essentially create this kind of a deal right here on those two figures. And we'll show you how easy it is to not just get shading 
with your metals, but also things like reflected light, where we're actually reflecting blue colors onto our metals, all kinds of really fantastic stuff. And we're going to get to that next with our initial pre-glaze. Before I dive into that initial pre-glaze that we were just talking about, I wanted to show you some of the other ones that we've been painting. And just I wanted you to see what they look like. You can really see some of the reflected light on the basically the parts that are right next to the interior of the cloak we can really see it there and here's actually some of that calve that i was just showing you and that's where I, I first started to experiment with freehand using the actual gold metallic now we've got all that stuff out on the pallet here we're going to just take some of our mona lisa this is odorless paint thinner it's really good stuff you could use i think either ak interactive i have also used the mig ammo odorless thinner those uh, that's the most gentle one uh the mig uh, sorry the mona lisa the mig ammo is okay i think it's a little bit rougher on the paints now let's get to some pre-glazing here on the base first we're going to take our black spinel a little bit of the van dyke brown and pre-glaze is essentially just taking some of these not just darker colors but colors that also have a little bit of a I call it a staining property. It means that when we put this on here and we go to wipe it away in a few minutes, there's a little something left behind. We'll talk about the primer after I get these colors on here to give these things a few moments just to set. It's another thing with the oils. You want to, as often as possible, just maybe let them set there for 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. I mean, you got you got time. <laughs> you have time. So if you let the paint just kind of set, almost like bread in a proving drawer for even just a few minutes, you'd be surprised at how much easier it is to get subsequent brush strokes on there. We'll talk about the, I think they're latex-free makeup sponges. And we're just about, we're going to start pulling those out now because this will be sort of a stage now, phased pre-glaze, where we do a little bit here at a time. So we'll do this. Now we got these things. Makeup sponges. And the latex-free is kind of important because... Here, we'll show you one that is not. And see how crumbly that is? That can be extremely, extremely crumbly. We don't want that crumbly stuff. You want something like this. That first of all is really strong. It's not going to pull apart when we go to uh, you know, uh, brush off some paint from the figure. Now you can see that I've cut these up into smaller pieces. It's just a whole lot easier on many levels because I can take a smaller piece like this and then get down into some hard to reach areas. Now look at this. Look at that. You can see the difference from the primer. Look at that. And this is no Zenithal primer or anything like that. This is me just brushing on some Badger Stino Res primer. We'll show you that right now. It's kind of a mix of the, I think it's the olive green, and this is the light flesh. So Stino Res Badger, uh, USA Airbrush, I think is one place you can get this. And then, of course, well, I've gotten enough Amazon <laughs> when I really need it. So lots of places to grab that. So you can see how some stuff is left behind here. Look at that. That's a decent amount left behind. You say, well, why not do a Zenithal Prime? Well, when I put colors into this, they're going to mix with that. Which, well, not going to happen, obviously. With the, here, Let's get some of our golds in here next. No, we'll do... Uh, we'll do our blues next. So indigo mostly, a little bit of Prussian blue smidge of that tiny little bit of thinner not too much just to get that to flow these are just craft brushes right here uh, these are from hobby lobby gosh i think a set of 12 of them is five bucks or whatever royal lang nickel is also another sort of a craft brush type of deal that you could use now these are old original metal gw figures right here i've got some other a whole bunch of other things that i've done the tmm on i've done it on these are for patreon series uh, necrons 
Actually, I've done two different Necron series with TMM, one in oils and one in acrylic. And of course, lots of object source lighting and some intricate basing as well. So here we're just hitting this with the indigo with the Prussian blue. We just got to get this stuff in here. I don't care if it goes over onto the gold areas because, well, reflected light. If gold is so shiny, how in the world does that, none of that dark blue get reflected onto the gold? Just a little something to think about. When you're doing this pre-glaze, the more of the thinner that you use, more likely it is that, well, it could travel a bit. So a little bit of spatteriness. Uh, the less you use, well, you don't really have to worry about that quite so much. Again, working with our indigo Prussian blue mix. It's, uh, again, not a problem if some of this gets onto the goal because we sort of need it there anyway. You know what? It's even going to go up there. Just realized. And I need to do that on his sword as well because that's going to form sort of the backbone of the metallic man. I'll just do regular uh, true metallic silver steel on the uh, glaives here. Really, well, this is more of a glaive. The other one's more of a sword. I think we got that pretty much set. Let's hit this. No big deal. Sponge time. Now, indigo is and Prussian blue both are what we call those staining colors. So you can see, look at this, how much of that stays behind. And uh, if, like I said, the best thing is, well, first of all, this is multicolored zenithal, right? Most zenithal primate is just, well, grayscale. It's you're spraying some kind of white whatever over black. Just nothing's going to mix there. The stuff, the paint that we put in there in subsequent layers is going to mix into this. And of course, we're already starting to see our shading here. And again, the smaller sponges can get into some of the smaller areas too. This also helps to control just how much paint you got here. Because with oils, less is more. More is uh, always going to be way too much. Yeah, just uh, think of it like chipping and rust and streaks and everything else. It's always exciting to put those on vehicles. But next thing you know, you've got that thing. 90% of the surface is covered in chips and rust and streaks. And there's not much left. Not much left. Okay, here's our... Again, that's essentially wiped away. Poof. Now let's get to some of those gold colors here. Now just here's another one. This doesn't have any paint on it. And we're gonna mostly stick to the Esfultum and the Van Dyke Brown here. Let this get down into some of these recesses sometimes, maybe a little more thinner to get down into the recesses. Now, if you saw the last video with the Diwali uh, cave troll, and I talked about the absorption. So that was a 3D printed miniature, and 3D printed resin or 3D printing resin is super absorbent. Resin, kind of like regular casting resin, is kind of absorbent, not really. Plastic, new metal, which these guys obviously are new. So. Uh, that's why I just kind of use a little bit less with the liquid these days because, well, the more that liquid you got, you know, you kind of make the, the miniature a little bit more slippery. Paint might be a little less likely to stick in some areas. Okay, we'll hit the rest of this and... Just about ready to go with him. Time for this lad. Again, a little S-Fultum. 
mixed in with the Van Dyke brown. Just realize that there's some different shapes here on uh, the, the metal ones than the plastic. So there's be a little bit of difference between the two. Now those original plastic ones that you saw. I think we're just about set there. Now we can start to think about wiping this stuff away. Now this is an earth tone, Van Dyke Brown and the Asphaltum. So I'm going to give those at least uh, just a minute or two to stick. I'm going to just show you a little, little something here that you'll see is coming up now. There's that same gold, right, the metal. When we mix something darker here, like this asphaltum, kind of a very dark reddish brown, look at how, how that almost sets to almost turn into a, a copper here. So see how that gets darker? What's the hardest thing to do with metallic paints? Get things darker here, but this way, it's actually really, really, really easy. Now I'm going to show you another little quick thing here. So this is the iridescent white which we have now mixed with the Indian yellow and how's that for a snazzy ultra bright gold oh my gosh this is that's just look at that it's just jumping at you so instead of trying to buy that color which you're pretty much never gonna find why buy 10 tubes of gold when you can take this one gold color okay these two and then make anything else because guess what the metals over here is going to be things like the prussian blue and this prussian blue and the, and the interference blue so a lot of that sort of mixing going on start to wipe some of this away here so some of it does remain behind that's nice uh, after about 15, 20 minutes, if it if it hasn't stuck like a staining color, that there's no point in waiting any longer. It's not going to make a difference. If it doesn't start really giving you that adhesion after that amount of time, it's it's just not a staining color, and it's not gonna not going to happen. So there we go. We just wiped a little more of that away. Let's do a similar thing here. So get another sponge for ourselves. Almost there. All right, that's it. Pre-glaze is finished. And let's see if we can find ourselves one that just uh, doesn't have any of the primer on it or any of the paint on it. Let's see if we got one here. And we'll just show you a little bit of a comparison. Ah. Again, this is something that we can interact with. This is still wet paint. We can work with this. Speaking of working with it, we're going to do that next. First thing we're going to do, actually, is establish some of these blues here on the robes and other things. We'll do that real quick because then we know exactly what we want to do with our metals here, how much blue we need to reflect and such. So let's get to that next. Let's start to work with some of these lighter blues here. Decent amount of Prussian blue here, some indigo. And then a little bit of our white, and even a little hint of the brilliant yellow pale there. Big old brush, right? Big old brush. And we're going to go strong into this. We're also going to get that. Now, we're just going to make that a big old blue gem because that is what the person had requested. And again, see how little paint there is on that brush? Why? Because we're going to be largely just interacting with colors that are already on here. That zenithal that we talk about. Yeah, we'll let this also, that sash, 
be that color of blue. Banner. You can see how little paint there is on that. And this is not really about uh, the traditional layering. I think a lot of folks, when they're using the oils, they say, oh, okay, I'm going to use it just like acrylics, except each of my tiny little stair step layers is going to be wet so that I can blend it all. You could do that if you wanted. Uh, that's just, you might as well just use acrylics for that because acrylics do that very well. Of course, the oils, that's not really what they do very well. They're, they like to be here, and we'll show you in just a sec now that we've got this on here. Well, what they would prefer is for us to maybe grab one of these little, nice little uh, filbert brushes here, like so. Take our much lighter color, and by much lighter, I mean a lot lighter here, something like this. Again, less is more. And then do something like this here. See how there's no steer step layers there? We just we went strong into those areas where we know it's just gonna need to be lighter. I don't have to worry about brush strokes or whatever, because I can just take what I call a blending brush, which could be any brush. It could be this one. And then I can go back in and blend that. Brush strokes would be all gone. Uh, pretty much uh, looking like it's been airbrushed. So you can see again, a, essentially a dry brush sort of approach here. Nice and quick, nice and easy. As I get down closer to the ground level, not quite as much. But look at this. See how that's picking up all the that darker pre-glaze color? If I want to keep adding lighter stuff, I got to go back and I got to get some fresh blue color. Let's do that on this guy. Let's do that on his robes back here. Now, of course, if you wanted to spend hours and hours on each of these guys and refine, 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 you can do that too. We're trying to keep these uh, the time span on these a little bit lower. So what we can do, uh, yeah, more highlights. I don't want to do too much more just yet. We have to add that lighter. But here, I'm going to actually go more towards the indigo with that. Let's really lighten that up nicely here. Again, there was a little bit too much paint on that brush. There was a whole bunch stacked on there. See how that's uh, blending? That's fantastic, but paint's getting on the brush. So what i got to do is come back over here. we got to get ourselves some more of that paint paint the at least a lighter color anyways drop some into here and there's a, again real quick we can highlight that more if we want which i will be doing But all of this, you say, well, what the heck? This has nothing to do with true metallic metal gold. Well, it kind of does, because without this value right here, I have no idea what the gold should look like as far as how light or dark that should be. So it's kind of necessary. I'm going to go a smidge lighter here right now. And on this guy, similar thing. Now, if I'm just doing this as a just a normal work session, right? My normal work session, I've got 12, 20 of these guys working on them all at once. 
it's a little different here because we're trying to demonstrate a few more things but yeah if this was just me there would be a whole bunch of these guys out on the table here so i'm going to just capture some more of that light there a little more on this here cloak maybe perhaps a smidge more on the banner in a few places Just do a little bit of blending of that. Number two, I don't want to go crazy putting all kinds of stuff on the banner here because if I wanted to paint a pattern on that, I don't really want a whole ton of paint sitting on there either. That's not going to be terribly helpful. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take some of this brilliant yellow pale, we'll mix it with the Van Dyke brown here, and just super quick, bam, See a nice warm gray down here? I actually have a video on what we did with the basing here with the Green Stuff World leaves and the Luke's APS and Woodland Scenics flock and such that we added. I'll try and uh, link that one for you too. They're all, a lot of these videos that I'm talking about, they're just regular YouTube videos here on the channel and they're pretty darn recent ones as well. Then, of course, there's always the Patreon stuff, which really dives into things that much deeper. Uh, you know, I'll just hit the, uh, the sword there a little bit. So for now, I'm going to say that's enough for our blues. Now we're going to get into the golds here. That's the kind of the part you've all been waiting for. So let's go for the golds. We'll do it next. Let's start to mess around with some of these golds here. What I'm going to do is that little thing that I showed you earlier with the asphaltum and the adding the gold paint to it. Well, we'll do that. And we're just going to start to make that be a wee bit more shiny. I mean, you could just stop here, right? Or you could take that super bright gold that we just did and just one shot it just with a quick old dry brush of that and of course dry brushing with oils is a whole different deal because it's mixing with all the paints that are already here which is really sweet and again it is very much a dry brush also to the metallic oil paints that i've made one thing i've noticed is that when you hit them with the dull coat which is just your standard army painter anti shine love this i can brush it on 365 days a year, I can pretty much climate control the interior of the house enough to make that work for me. Once the stuff's dry, the oils that is, it's just paint. And that stuff works really well. And when you when you put that over the top, I guess uh, some people have said that when you do that with the acrylic metallics, it kills the metallic effect. Eh, that's not the case. Not with the oils. off to this guy here and uh, get minimal amounts of the paint here if you pile up too much of this here you won't be working very long because it just you'll while well, you just have to take some of the paint off which you can do with a makeup sponge by the way or even with a brush or something like that if you find there's just too much paint on there Now I'm going to try and take even more of this paint out of here, and it's going to be really an in-depth cleaning of the brush using this paper towel. That's it. Now we got this super bright gold here. Let's just see what happens when we start to dust that over the top as well. One thing that's actually kind of handy sometimes well, if you're working on a bunch of figures, or let's say, I don't know, you get, you get interrupted, you can't finish whatever you're doing, and you say, oh, man, the oil's dried. What's the point of using oils now? It's all wet into wet. I've actually discovered, as I do my armor painting series, where they take several days, if not weeks, to film, and 
while the paint's going to dry, because for me, paint usually is dry in anywhere between 8 to 16 hours max. Well, if that's the case, I just let it dry, and then I start working over the top of it, and metallics kind of like actually going over the top of dry paint. It really does adhere very well. You really don't lose. You, you, you'd say, well, you can't wet blend. But because of the way the oils work, believe it or not, you almost sort of can. Now, this is, see how we got a little color temperature change? This is more of a yellow. That's almost a bit more red. That's what I like about this. It sort of lets me cheat a bit and, well, sneak in a little extra, little extra color there. I'm going to make sure I get some of that. I'm going to take a smidge of the gold into here. Again, we don't want too much of that paint sitting on there. So we've started to create a little bit of our gold effect. But that's we can't just do that here. We're going to take some of our our liner brushes here. This is about four dollars and somewhere between four dollars thirty cents, four dollars and fifty cents, depending on I guess well where you live. Now look at this. We can take just a smidge of that gold. We're going to mix it with Van Dyke Brown. We're going to make ourselves a really, really, really dark gold color. And that means now I can kind of come back in here and essentially restore some of my deepest darks because the, the old metal figure here doesn't have quite as many sharp detail edges. Also, you must have dark to show light like this right here. Not going to be very much TMM unless we have, see, a little bit of dark right there. It sharpens up that edge. We'll do the same over here. Look at this. Yeah. I think we'll just give him some skin tones there. May not even bother with the skin tones here again because, well, we want to show you as much of just the true metallic metal gold as possible. I mean, it'd just be the usual sort of terra rosa mixed with brilliant yellow pale. Again, you must have a dark to show light, and that's what we're doing is trying to really bring out some of these darks here. Even on his helmet, where possible. And you know what? I'm just going to... Now we'll maybe hit that with some of our Terra Rosa as well. Let's do that on our banner bear now. Especially here on that helmet. That's really important there. And then in these little sections of his armor. So not a black lining because, well, A, there's no black paint on there. And second of all, it's not really a line. We're trying to get more of a shape out of it. And it's also got some metallic in it. So that's why it's not black lining because black lining, well, that's not going to give you much of a metallic finish is it not really i'll just go with the gold on the chain mail as well so what we're talking about with that skin tone right i'll just show you real quick here so terra rosa Brilliant Yellow Pale. It is a mix that I use all the time for skin tones. And even that's almost a bit of a dry brush. Why? Because there's still pre-glaze in here. That pre-glaze is mixing with this skin tone that we're throwing in here. And it is also sort of graying that down just a little bit. Yeah, we'll just give him some skin for his hands and just a touch there for the face. Keeping it simple here, we'll just do a little bit more of our 
brilliant yellow pale over the top of that. Here too. Uh, real quick, I will hit the. This, I'm going to take Terra Rosa and actually some of the Asphaltum here. We got a much darker, sort of reddish brown here than the skin tone. The oils also make things like banner poles and spears, shafts, and all that kind of stuff so much easier to do. Because all I need to do is say, all right, what do I want to do to lighten this up? Not to, not going to use the brilliant yellow pale there. I'll just do something like that. And the same thing on the other side. And that's that. Now I'm going to see if I can just throw a little bit of my lighter gold color out here. Then we're going to work on our silvers. You know, things like the swords and such. And then actually kind of come back around to the golds again. Because uh, that, remember we were talking about with the pre-glaze, where we wanted to give it a few, at least a few minutes to set. I'm going to kind of do the same thing with our metal. So see how we're, it says effectively a highlight on a gold. That's the iridescent pearl white. Think of this as your white. This is about as close as you're going to get to metallic white. You can't mix white with your metallics because that's a guaranteed way to destroy your metallic effect. There won't be a metallic effect. It will be gone. Yeah, so you can't do that without completely annihilating your lovely metallic effect because it's going to kill that. That's why we were emphasizing so much of the dark colors, right? So it crosses just right here. Start to lighten that a little bit. So by adding some of those darks there, we start to see some more of our shapes start to emerge here from the these little, even his chain mail too. Let's hit that. These, not too much with the gold because again, there's blue right next to it. And of course, anytime you're doing a non-metallic metal thing, you want to have that alternating dark and light zones. You know, not just, well, it's light up where the light is and then dark where the dark is. No, you have to have reflections, lots of little reflections. So see how these lights that we add immediately start to stand out. There's the, the trim areas on his helmet. That filigree, that little touch of the Indian yellow. Well, look at this, huh? You don't often see contrasts like that with just the metallics, but we really tried to establish our darker tones as as much as we could. And well, here's here's sort of the reward for doing that. It's almost a bit opposite world here with the oils where it's easier to make it's easier to make your oil paint or your your golds darker than it is to make them lighter. So and that's really tough to do with standard acrylic stuff without completely destroying the gold effect. But here you can really do that quite well. So let me compare. Yeah, see, you can really see this one here where those highlights have been added. I mean, think of this. Gosh, when I'm, I'm thinking of GW paints, uh, it's almost like a mithril silver, but mixed with 
a very bright regular yellow to create just this really bright atomic gold here that you ordinarily just would not have. So again, we're starting to work in our lighter gold colors here. Eyes, shoulders. We'll get to his shield as well. Let's hit some of that chain mail there. And if I want to make a, you know, a little bit of a blue reflection in here, all I have to do is just put a hint of some Prussian blue, mix it with the metal, or I could even just take some interference blue and mix it with this. So the interference powders, again, you just mix that with a linseed oil. And I've got several videos on the Patreon page that, that talk about cr basically creating your own metallic oil paints. Uh, the other couple of videos that you've hopefully you've seen already, uh, the ones on the essentially do-it-yourself fluorescent oils, it's the same idea. You're just taking the fl uh, fluorescent powders, also from Green Stove World, and you're just mixing those with linseed oil. Now, I'm, I'm going to guess that you could probably get those metallic powders from, from more than just Green Stuff World, but I think Pearl X also has the, the mica flakes and such that you can get mixed with the linseed oil. Now, if we start to put these, ah, uh, look at the shield, huh? look what's happening there. Put a little smidge of that even into here. And hopefully, right next to the uh, little gemstone thing, that's going to make a big difference, and it sure does. Look at that. But again, all the while, this is mixing with what's underneath there. So instead of just a a layer on top of dead dry paint, no, there's actually there's stuff mixing here. Gives us a little bit more depth to the metals. And that added, well, the added advantage of the oils is that they're far more durable than the acrylics. That there's a reason why they painted houses and cars and everything with oil paints and not acrylics because it is way more durable. And other folks, they've pretty much confirmed this too. They've actually tried to scrape away the paint and it just wouldn't come off. And I've dropped resin and solid resin and metal vehicles on the floor from, now a carpeted floor, but from several feet, four, at least three and a half, almost four feet, and that's happened a couple of times, and it's still just fine. That is a testament to just how rugged those oil paints can be, which makes a lot of sense. Oh, no, no kidding. That is why they used oil paints for so long for houses and everything else, because it was so durable. Let's see if I can get a little bit of an edge light there. Now this is where we're going to give you, I guess, a quick little sort of a preview right here. This is some of that interference blue. And just sort of dry brush that in there. Why? Because we have this blue cloak right next to this. So just using a little bit of the interference blue, now we have ourselves a metallic blue, literally a metallic blue right there. We'll even pop a little bit of that over here. On his helmet, that's where the TMM comes from, like over here. Same deal, interference blue starts to literally tint that blue. 
do that over here see that the interference blue just essentially turns our gold into blue why it's reflecting the blue of the cloak there where's my here it is you know the the banner over his head maybe that's also causing a little bit of a blue reflection there on his armor here blue reflection certainly over here and possible even here on the back of his head some blue back there but speaking of the interference blue what i'm going to do now is uh, jump up into here and on his sword and we're going to try and do some of the the tmm stuff in terms of the the two swords here and see what happens with that we'll do that next let's work in some of our blue ish tmm for stuff like the sword blades wow look at this that is the prussian blue mixing with some of the interference blue here that's going to give you a really intense metallic blue you don't want to overdo it here but wow <laughs> that it does it takes very little again not just like oh well, look at this just a couple of brush strokes and bam that just really got a nice per, uh, bluish look to here let's get the lave up here then we'll be using our iridescent pearl white as our that de facto highlight color again here let's thin this down maybe a smidge and then let's see what happens and if we've got enough dark well that should look quite light now we'll get some of the paint off of this brush and we'll just let it blend itself the rest of the way put a little bit of an edge on the that side of the blade let's do this side now again take the excess off of there and let that blend now we'll come back the other way here we've got to add some of our some dark to that and this is going to be more of an indigo which and maybe even a little bit of the black so think of it's almost like a blackened steel here but this is our shadow color so that's sort of a non-metallic metal effect but it's all done with the metallic paint so it's it's got that shine and the sparkle of metallic paints but not quite the oh what do we say it's it's it reflects all the colors we're trying to get this blue here to sort of reflect the banner color here let's see if we can make this a little bit lighter with our interference blue down here towards the bottom just enough and the same over here and then we'll need to get a little bit of that on the edge of that blade let's do the same down here to this one so again trying to lighten this up a little bit I don't want to do too much okay good enough back over here to our iridescent pearl white for the de facto highlight there so this is exactly how i would paint this if this was regular old non-metallic metal i'd pretty much be using all these same colors just minus the addition of all the metal like the interference blue and now the iridescent pearl white so it's the same approach we're just all i'm doing is just adding these uh, metallic paints to it that's all you got to do bam you got yourself some tmm it can really be this easy now look at that looks like tm it looks like non-metallic in a way but it's actually true metallic metals I mean th that's nice and easy but yeah look at that see it's much more exciting than just oh look we're gonna do some mithril silver or some gunmetal or something like that then we'll 
do a null and oil thing and boom, that's it. This wasn't really, did this really take that much more work? I don't, I don't think so. Now I'm actually going to take some of this. And this is just a straight up iridescent pearl white in a couple of spots here to really shoot some highlights into this. Remember we wanted to let the uh, gold have a chance to sit here and set for just a little bit. And I remember I mentioned earlier that you let these things dry. You'd be amazed at how even more, how much more coverage you will get when you paint this over the top of, say, dry metallic oils. Now here we need to get a nice highlight edge here. Otherwise, uh, it's not going to be light, dark, light. Why is it dark? Maybe because the sword casting a shadow right down the middle of this here. Now we also need the that blue reflected light. Let's see if we can do that here. I just want to make sure you can see what's going on there. So we use the same stuff we use on the sword. See how that's actually now a blue color? Why? Because it's right by his robe there. It's right next to all that blue. How in the world is none of that actually getting any kind of blue influence? I don't know if you can really see this. Unfortunately, the shield's kind of in the way there. Going to try and get my couple of lighter blues here on the gold. So this is the difference. This is where the TMM comes in as opposed to just metallics. Interjecting this blue here. Uh, not so much there. Even just a little bit right there. Look at that. See that? His uh, top of his head crest there works a little bit differently. And here, there's, these are a couple of my army painting series where we were really working with the uh, TMM. This is, and a lot of the interference colors here. And same thing with the Osterix. Look at that blade. See, that also kind of changes a little bit as you move around. Uh, think of it almost like a color shifting type of a paint there in a way. So here, let's get to our banner beer. See if we can't throw a little bit of the uh, blue in a couple of these spots again. Over here. Uh, perhaps up here where the uh, rope might reflect a little bit onto the onto the armor. And then I'm going to try and just uh, see what kind of highlights we can get here. We're going back to the iridescent pearl white to see just how much we have. We can really still make that lighter. Uh, let's see what we can do on the top of his helmet and then some of these little uh, filigree details. I might have to also bring in some dark there. Uh, I'll probably do one more, one last segment here. We'll just call it the kind of the final details and also uh, some freehand as well. We've got the grommets, no, not grommets, these little rings right here. Let's do these. Good enough. Let's not forget the edge of that blade. So even here, I need to get maybe a little bit more of my light. Bam, right there. So again, picking up a little bit more of a highlight there. Let's see if we can hit the chest here just a couple of spots with that lightest of light again think of it as your 
for all intents and purposes, metallic white. Gonna come back here with that really dark metallic color. That's the Van Dyke brown mixed with the just the, the gold. Ah, so easy. Be able to work that little bit of dark into there. So now that edge starts to stand out more. I think I needed to do that here too, yeah. And I need some reflected light here. I am actually going to take the gold and some of this Terra Rosa. Now we have a kind of a reddish gold here. Uh, change in the color again just a little bit. I'm going to take some of that away and then we'll just blend those two together. So this is, again, another little different color here for our gold. Gold is a very sparkly kind of thing. It tends to really just absorb all the colors around it. That's sort of what makes it unique. And the Terra Rosa is just dark enough. Because if you try mixing lighter colors with the... Metallics, remember, you kill the metallic effect. The Terra Rosa is just dark enough. So again, we're just kind of changing the changing the tune there a little bit with some of the gold colors here. Let's uh, drop some of this on, do the shield. On that side, now we'll just take this and we're going to use it as a blending brush. And this is the sweet thing. Yeah, look at this. We can even do the blending with the, with the metallics. I've even used smaller brushes than this as blending brushes. It's a really, really kind of neat. Can get a little reflected light underneath there. Gonna try and bring in a little bit of the uh, gold color back here to also contrast with the blues that we inserted into the gold. And then I'll say that is enough. So there's a couple of things I'll do. Just some of the little free handy things, right? Some on the robes there, and then let's see what we can do on the banner. So we'll try some free hand and other final details, and we will do that next. I'm just going to start here with a really simple free hand line. That's all it is. It's nothing more than a line here. We'll get some of the gold, maybe even some of our darker color. And this is it. We're just going to have a nice little line here that runs across like so. Uh, here it is. But the robe is doing all kinds of billowing here. So we have to sort of break this up into smaller, smaller shapes there. Just want to make sure you can see that. So see how the, it kind of moves up here? Because if it was just a continuous straight here, it would that would look really, really weird. So and remember, this is our somewhat darker gold color. And you can see how nice and opaque this is. The acrylic... Uh, metallic's not necessarily uh, quite so opaque. Now, this is the powders. So the interference colors, those are really translucent. This, the, the stuff that I mixed myself, this is not translucent at all. So we got this pattern right here. It's basically a circle, and then there's uh, some 
ovals around it. So here's a kind of an oval here. And then it's sort of surrounded by an oval. Nice thing about the freehand with the oils is we can move this around. If we don't like it, we can just completely remove it. I could just take a makeup sponge and wipe this all away. So it kind of goes like this into a yeah, almost sort of an a little X there. And we'll have it do this a similar thing out here. I'm just you know, figuring out what we might want to have for this pattern here. And now it's going to sort of disappear into this fold. I was trying to arrange this so that the stuff that was the easiest to see, the most recognizable part of the pattern, would be out here where you can actually see it. That's a, kind of a little bit of a cheat mechanism right there, like right here. I'm just going to hint at that shape there instead of actually trying to somehow figure out, okay, is that exactly where it would be? And then here, I'm just going to end this. Maybe something like that. So that's that's all we needed. Here, let's uh, go back to our original one here. Let's see what happens when we make this a little bit lighter here. Can we get some highlights on our frame? Oh, yes, we can. That is definitely lighter. So that's some of the gold metallic paint mixed with our iridescent pearl white. Again, becomes sort of like a highlight color. Oh, yeah, that really does. That stands out. And we'll do a little more here on our cloak. Then let's hit this uh, banner thing up here. See what we can do with this. That, see how much lighter that makes it? And at the same time that we're making it lighter, we're also sort of cleaning that up. I can come back in there with some indigo too and clean that up. This is an area that I for sure wanted to have lighter because it's right at this apex of this uh, fold right here. Definitely wanted that to be lighter. And the same thing here, where it's right on the end of that fold. I'll brighten this up a little bit too. Now I'll go back with a little bit of the indigo here, and maybe darker. I won't forget the Prussian blue. Let's get a little more of the Prussian blue in here. And here we'll, again, just trying to sharpen up some of these lines here. Because we we're just trying to figure out the pattern. Now that we know where the pattern is supposed to be, we can maybe get a little more precision in some of these lines. can go back and forth go back to the gold here take care of that so I know this is a, just a real quick down and dirty right here just super quick but 
uh, it's a basically to sort of introduce you to the idea of doing the true metallic metals with gold. I've, uh, I've even got a Mandalorian. Yes. Uh, and that that's just on the YouTube channel. You check out the Twitch channel. I've got saved sessions of dozens of figures being painted, sci-fi figures, everything being painted in TMM, much more elaborate than this. And of course, all of those Patreon videos. I mean, the Army Painter pledge level, that's going to have the most because, gosh, I think I've done at least four or five Army Painting series with TMM. Not just the Necrons, but also some fad. just did a series on Zangors, that's right, and also in TMM. Uh, that was a not just TMM, but there was even a vertigree effect as well, and lots of interference stuff, because, you know, Zinchi Chaos goodness. And I'll, again, I'll try and link as many of the uh, previous videos as I can in the, in the description. But they are in playlists. Uh, especially anything Lord of the Rings is going to be in the Lord of the Rings playlist. So you can hunt those things down. Anything that involves basing, surprise, surprise, that's in the basing playlist. Well, lighten this up. Yeah, I'll let that be a little bit lighter gold right there. Let's get our bright highlight metal color in just a couple of spots there. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to just say this is uh, this is good enough here. This is just going to get you the idea across, and this is something that you could hopefully replicate many times over the course of your the rest of your army. And as always, I want to say thanks for watching. If you're already subscribed, that's appreciated. If you are not already subscribed, maybe you could do that, and then you'll for sure get all the alerts when new stuff like this goes online. Uh, if you could drop a like on the video, well, that would be much appreciated as well. I'm just going to throw a little bit of the Prussian blue in there. Again, just looking to designate a little bit more of a detail right there. So, I mean, that is... Some very quick again, true metallic metal in oil paints. Yes, taking the powders, mixing them with the linseed oil. Again, that is a one of several Patreon videos that talks about this is from another one right here. So, yes, using a lot of the interference paints and the powders, and uh, again, just trying to match what we did with these uh, here on the Twitch channel. And I'll, again, there's a link to the Twitch channel also in the description. So thank you so much, everybody. Catch you on the next video.